In this session, we'll generate a random group of trees in Grasshopper and photorealistically render the scene using Thea Render. We'll use the XFrog library of trees for our plans, and we're going to build upon last session's random meadow component in Grasshopper. This is what our final rendering will look like. We'll render it with a nice alpha channel so it can easily be used in Photoshop. Before we start, we're going to set up a scene in Rhino with a library of XFrog trees imported as Thea blocks. So I'm going to start by setting up a library. My library, I'll create a new layer called library, and beneath that I'll create a new sublayer called tree library. I'm going to make a separate library for trees, shrubs, and grasses. In the tree library, I'm going to add a number of models for alders. So to do that, I'm going to make a new alder layer, sublayer. I'll name this alder 7. I'm going to move it to the right place. Now, I'm going to go to import Thea model from the Thea toolbar. And I have my XFrog libraries installed. So they'll show up here. I'm going to browse and find the um, XFrog alder library from the Europe 3 library for XFrog. Here's Gray Alder. I'm going to pick the seventh model and import the proxy as a bounding box. I'm going to place it at the origin, 000. Escape to cancel placement. Continue placement. Now I'm going to move this up a bit so that the root stop may be beneath the ground plane. I'm going to test it by starting the interactive rendering in the viewport. All right, I need to move my tree much higher. Now I'll test it again. I could try moving it a little higher. And, and it looks good. Make sure you move it to the older layer. Right now, default is the default layer, the current layer. OK, now it's definitely on layer older 7. And I'll set up the rest of my library this way. You can also add shrubs to the shrub library, like junipers, for example. I have some junipers here to start making my shrub layer. I'm going to add, for this demo, I'm going to add a selection of alders. I'm going to add a selection of junipers for my shrubs and for my grasses. I'm going to add a selection of wild oats. And I'm going to create the ground plane the same way as in the random meadow session. And we'll assign it a ground material from the Thea online repositories. So once I have my scene set up nicely, I'm going to start Grasshopper.
Nin Grasshopper. I'm going to open a random, the random meadow component from last session. Let's save this as a new file, or we can copy and paste this into a new document. So we'll start with the meadow component. And I'm going to change the label for the layer to grasses. Now I'm going to copy this whole group, paste it. And I'll go ahead and delete the group for it. And I want to get rid of this ground plane part of the, of the group. I'll create the ground plane up here. So this will be the grasses, ground plane. This one is going to be my shrub layer. So I'm under define object attributes, I'm going to change the label for this to shrubs. I will label this shrubs, and I'll go ahead and group all of this. And give this group a, a label. I'm going to copy this group again and paste it for the trees. We'll do the same things. I'll change this label to trees. And I'm going to make sure I change the output baking layer name. And I'm going to call this layer trees. So we've nicely organized our library, so our job is going to be very easy. We just need to assign multiple grasses to the extended geometry import here, multiple shrubs to this extended geometry component and multiple trees to this component. For the grasses, I'm going to select two of my wild oats here. So I'm going to turn on the grasses layer. And select both of my Under Extended Geometry, I'm going to right click, I'm going to set multiple extended geometries, and it's going to select both of those oats. Now, for the count, the total number of oats in Populate Geometry, I'm going to create more. I need about 10 or 12,000, so I'm going to change this to make my ma max 15,000 and make my starting number 12,000. 
Grasshopper is going to think for a little bit. And I'll soon have a random distribution of grasses ready. I'm going to hide the grass library layer and I'm going to go ahead and bake this layer. It's going to bake onto a new layer called grasses. I'm going to hit activate on the bake objects component. And I'm going to minimize grasshopper and I have a grasses layer here. You'll see that if I now turn on the grass library, you know, I can see all of the blocks, the outline for the blocks. If I turn off the grass layer and I turn on the grass library, I only see the two original blocks that I imported. So I can easily manage my blocks this way. I turn on the ground layer and the grasses layer and I can render the scene in the viewport with the uh, And there is my random distribution of grass. Now I'm ready to start adding the shrubs. I'm going to go to my extended geometry component in the shrubs group. In Rhino, I'm going to go to the shrub library. I'm going to turn on the shrub library and I'm going to turn on all of the Juniper models, one, three, four, and five. I'm going to select them all, and in Grasshopper, I'm going to right-click on Extended Geometry, set multiple geometries, and I'm going to set my count here to a max of, say, 50, and I'm going to distribute maybe 24 shrubs. Now, I have four different types of shrubs coming in. But I'm splitting this four times. Now, let's go ahead and bake that. I'm going to hide the shrub library. I'm going to bake the shrub layer. We'll go ahead and preview this um, with the uh, in the viewport. There's my distribution of shrubs. I'll note at this point that if I want to edit this, what I can do is make sure I have the shrub layer and the shrub library layer both turned on and I can move some of these a little bit. Now, I hide the shrub library, I render again, and I don't have any shrubs overlapping the edge. So you can make some manual edits as needed. Now, we're ready to add the trees. So I'm going to turn on the tree library, I'm going to turn on Alder three, four, five, six, and maybe seven. I'm going to select all of those. Three, four, five, and six. And back in Grasshopper, I'm going to go to the random tree group. Extended geometry, set multiple extended geometries. Now I can hide my tree library, and I'm going to go and bake 
the layer of trees. My tree layer is turned on. I can go ahead and render the viewport. We need to change the number of trees. I'm going to delete the tree layer here. I need to set this number slider to something more like eight. I'm going to make my max maybe 25. And I'm going to set this to eight trees. I'll go ahead and bake this and see what my result looks like. I'm going to render. Looks interesting. I'm going to rotate my scene, get a view I like. It's looking pretty good. I may want to adjust the trees just a little bit. So I'm going to turn on the tree library layer. I'm going to move this tree a little bit more into the scene using the gumball. Hide the tree library layer. Render in the viewport again. It's looking pretty good. I'll make sure everything just fits. Now we're ready to do a full rendering. You want to make sure you have a sun turned on with a time set. I've set it to here and my time set to around a little before four. In the Thea panel for render settings, I have a denoiser set. Under environment, I have soft shadows set and uniform illumination. And for the camera, I could optionally set some depth of field, for example, sharpness, and my focal distance would want to be quite close if I was to mess it up. Now we're ready to go to Thea Darkroom. Almost. Here, in the Thea camera panel, I need to hit Sync Rhino Viewport to get the resolution of my display. I'm going to go to Darkroom again, and for our Darkroom settings, we'll set this to Render Mode, Channels, we're going to turn on the Alpha Channel, Ambient Occlusion, Denoise, Global illumination. And then you can start rendering. Once the rendering finishes or progresses far enough, you can stop it. Check out your alpha channel. And on the color channel, look at your settings. I've set this from, changed this from standard to filmic, and I've adjusted my 
shadows, my ISO, and my brightness. And that concludes this session. You can save your rendering out here when you're done.